Welcome to the Big Four County Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourCountyFirms.com. Now, in today's podcast, I wanted to cover a scandal that we've gone over before, and that's the Evergrande scandal. And PwC is the auditor of Evergrande, and Evergrande is one of China's largest real estate developers. Well, it is their largest real estate developer and one of the largest real estate developers in the world. And Evergrande's had some financial troubles and PwC got into trouble over it because they, everybody, well, the Wall Street Journal signed, said that PwC gave them a clean bill of health, but I don't think that's really what PwC did. I think PwC said that the company's financials are okay. I don't even know if they did a full-blown audit, even though people say that they did, or some reports say that they did. And people are saying that there were no, there were no bad things that were brought up by PwC in their latest 2020 report. Well, now the Hong Kong financial regulator, which is also called the FRC, similar to the UK, is going to be investigating PwC. I'm not sure what that, what exactly that's going to entail, or whether they're going to hold PwC accountable for having Evergrande as a client. And they also ran into another article when I was looking into this about China's central bank saying that Evergrande's not going to have that big of an impact. And I think a lot of what China's been doing is playing this down. So I think that that might work in favor of PwC if China keeps playing down the size of the Evergrande financial issue they keep playing it down, then I'm not sure how much they're going to hold PwC accountable. But the articles that are also mentioning PwC being looked into by Hong Kong, it says that PwC has earned $42 million from Evergrande since 2009. So that's 12 years, as far as I can tell, of, of PwC doing work on Evergrande, and they've only earned $42 million. So I don't know how big of an issue this is for PwC, and I also don't know if they've really audited Evergrande every year. If they did, then they did it uh, on the cheap. And also, if it's only forty-two million dollars that they've earned, then I don't I don't really understand how big of a penalty PwC would have to pay, or I, I don't anticipate PwC would have to pay a big fine. And if they do, it's kind of crazy to have that much risk. This episode is brought to you by Boomer. Boomer helps you ace the interview at the big four accounting firms, and it does this by helping you practice on questions typically asked on the big four interview. And if you use the link or promo code big, and if you use the link, which goes to tryboomer.com slash big four or the promo code BIG4, then listeners get 10% off their purchase. So go ahead and check out their website, tryboomer.com and see if you like all the tools they have that can help you prep for your big four interview and you do choose to purchase it, make sure to use the link in the show notes because with that link, you're going to get 10% off or make sure to use our promo code. All the details are in the show notes. But I mean, there's a ton of headline risk here. There's already a huge article in Wall Street Journal, as I mentioned before, saying that PwC gave a clean bill of health on this company that's hitting global headlines all the time and is affecting stock markets all the time. And that's something I spoke about recently with KPMG and about how they recently were accused of lying to regulators. And it's these these one-off engagements, or not one-off engagement, but like these clients that can just blow into these huge brand-damaging fiascos and through this network of partnerships because it's, it's this branch of PwC in Hong Kong or China has potential to really damage the firm's brand and allow regulators across the world to use PwC's brand to create more regulation. Uh, who knows how this could be used? It could be used because there's a world tax rate of 15% that regulators are trying to pass around the world, and they could use this and other scandals to get the big four accounting firms to cooperate more and not to help clients avoid taxation. So th there's just multiple things when when big four accounting firms hit headlines like this. And it's a catch-22 because 
And one, on one hand, PwC isn't earning that much money from Evergrande. $42 million over 12 years is not that much for an audit. And yet this exposure is really big for their brand. And, and it's really hard to manage the press on that because you're willing to do a certain amount of work, but you also don't want to say, well, if things go wrong, we can just exit the back door. That's not how it works. So th that's why the big four accounting firms have a ton of admin you have to do when you're onboarding clients. But a lot of times the big four accounting firm just rush through that and they rubber stamp engagements every year. So it's just interesting. And this is going to be a big deal for PwC going forward because this just has tons of exposure and is mentioned all the time. Anytime the Chinese market goes down or the potential for this to blow up into something bigger because China has to mention that. I think that's why they mentioned the central banking thing. So there's more to come from this. The inspection of PwC as it relates to Evergrande is just starting. So we'll continue to see this. And as we've seen in the past, these scandals tend to last for years. For KPMG in Europe, there's multiple scandals that have lasted years upon years. So there will be plenty more to come on this. So that's the podcast for today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast to get future updates and check out the show notes for helpful links. Thanks for listening.